Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Video brought to you by Hago Romuchak. I actually have a little improvised session right here. And it's going to be something different, not an integral. It has to do with some simple algebra. And this is going to feel heavily like a really nice <laughs> ripoff. Um, and it's going to probably have a clickbaity title like uh, Don't trust Wolfram Alpha. Only trust your own math skills, brah, you fucking math jet. So, um, yeah, I'm Mr. Chaddington right here, and let me see. We are going to have the third root of, this is um, 8 plus 3 square root of 21, and then um, plus the conjugate right here. Let me put this away. Meaning, this is nothing but the third root of 8 minus 3 times the square root of 21. And OP is actually asking for a solution to this thing. He said he found this on Facebook in some math group, like integral part of happiness or something. And yeah, I'm only doing an improvised session on this thing right here because it's always the same thing you have to do. So you give this a new name, do some binomial theorem stuff, and yeah, then, then you're basically done. Um, I'm going to put my cable away and then we're going to start after the intro meme. Bruh. So this right here is basically a huge joke, but it's fun calculating stuff like this from time to time because the answers are so unexpected and we are dealing with the third root of something, meaning this thing right here has actually three solutions, not only one, but I guess only one is going to be a real solution right here. We are going to give this a new name. We are going to define this as just the sum a plus b and a plus b in itself is nothing but another number c, okay? One number nine. And what you can basically do, you, you don't have to give it an, a new name, but it is convenient to give it a new name. What the basic thing is you want to do is to get rid of those thirds right here, meaning in normal case you would like to either multiply this with the conjugate in some way, okay, if you have square roots, or you are going to take it to the third power and do some coefficient comparing, okay? But what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at um, A and B, and then we are going to cube them separately because, yeah, right. So this thing right here is A, and this thing right here is B, and we are going to cube it, okay? So, a to the third power is thus nothing but 8 plus 3 square root of 21. And b to the third power is then the conjugate. 8 minus 3 square root of 21. My name is Jeff. Okay, now, if we would make use of the binomial theorem, meaning what I said, we are going to cube both sides, okay? we are going to get definitely some a times b terms. That's something you're going to get. Like if you have a plus b, but the whole thing squared, it's going to be a squared plus b squared plus two times a b. So we are always bound to have some kind of a times b factor. It doesn't matter if it's a times b squared or something you're going to get through this binomial expansion. Um, we're just going to take a look at their product right now. Okay, so if we multiply a to the third power and this thing together, we are going to get, okay, this right here is going to result in a difference of two squares, meaning it's 64, right? And then negative three times three is nine, number nine, oh, big smoke meme, and then, yeah, square root of 21 squared is just 21. This right here is nothing but um, 64 minus, that's giving us 180, 189. And this is going to be a 5 and this is going to be 20, so negative 125. And a to the third power times b cubed is nothing but a times b to the third power, okay? So that's the same expression right here. Like I said, it's kind of an algorithm you can just go through. Meaning if we take the third root on both sides, 
we are actually going to get three solutions in the normal case. I just want to take a look at the simple real solution that we are going to get. Namely, that a times b is nothing but the third root of negative 125, meaning what to the third power is going to give us 125? It's definitely 5 because that's 5 times 5, 25, yeah. Um, this is going to be negative 5 then. Okay, we can just bring the negative to the front. That's something that works out on odd thirds. Okay, negative 5, Coolio. Now, like I said, we would like to take a look at c to the third power. It's going to give us a plus b to the third power. And since I never have this Pascal's triangle in my head. I'm just going to do it elementary. It's an improvised session. Um, that's just some of the things I always tend to forget. So just like polynomial division, I always forget or how to actually use the Euclidean algorithm. It's some of the stuff I always forget. So ah, never mind. It, it really doesn't matter. We are going to do it from scratch. So a squared plus b squared plus two times a b. Okay, that's the first part. So a plus b squared times a plus b. And yeah, right, this is going to give us a to the third power. So here's our boy, one of the boys that we are going to get, plus b to the third power, one of the other boys that we are going to get. What else do we have? We are going to have plus a b squared, plus two times a squared times b, and then probably the counterpart right here just with an a squared and a b squared respectively. So plus a squared b plus two b squared a. Yeah, right, Pascal's triangle. So we can collect those terms. We are going to get a free as the coefficient, meaning that's nothing but a to the third power plus b to the third power plus three a b squared plus three a squared b. Okay. We are going to have our factors of a and b right here. Right? That's why I extracted this. We also have a common factor of 3. Can we simplify this any... F yeah, right. We can simplify this because we have a factor of 3 times AB right here because that's 3 times AB times B and this is 3 times AB times A. Okay, meaning we can actually extract this. So this A to the third power plus B to the third power plus 3ab times and simply a plus b. This is cool, this is cool. Because you see, we now have that c to the third power is something and then times c right here. Okay, meaning if we rewrite this, c to the third power is nothing but Okay, a to the third power is nothing but this right here. 8 plus 3 square root 21 plus b to the third power. What we had down here is nothing but the conjugate plus 8 minus 3 times square root of 21. Yeah, doesn't that is going to cancel out? It's going to be rational. Plus 3 times ab. ab is nothing but this, so negative 15 times our c. Okay, like I said, you can cube this, you can do so and then compare coefficients. It's always the same algorithm. It's, it's just as easy as it is. Meaning, overall, c to the third power using hagoromo chalk is nothing but 16 minus 15 c. Oh, a cubic polynomial. I, I mean, I knew it would be a cubic polynomial because we are going to have cube roots. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a Facebook fun question. So there's bound to be some nice value in some way. Okay, it's a Facebook fun question. So it's never like trolley and stuff most of the time. If yeah, one. So, so some of the standard uh, things you can plug in is like one, negative one, zero, three, whatsoever. But we have this absolute beast right here, this absolute legend. And if we wouldn't have that, zero would be a solution, but that's not the case. But one is actually a solution. So one cubed is nothing but one being equal to 16 minus 15 is one. So 
our first root is actually one. And since we know one of the first roots, we can actually do polynomial division, which I always forget how to do. So we have to do this differently. I'm going to do it my standard way. Let me see at first. Okay, so, so we have found a solution. So this is one, it's just a multiplicative identity. Woohoo, hooray, coolio. But also if you bring all the stuff to the other side, that's equivalent to saying that c to the third power plus 15c minus 16 is nothing but zero. We know one root right here, meaning we can actually decompose this. That's equivalent to saying we have one linear factor, c minus one times. My method is, I, like I said, I never know how to do polynomial division. If I don't do this every day, I just for, forget how to do it. It's pretty simple, but, but I just tend to forget it. Maybe it's the same for you, my boy or girl. So what are we going to get? So the coefficient of our um, c to the third power is one. It's monic on that part, meaning we can put a c squared here. Also, we can easily calculate negative 16 by multiplying our absolute legend right here. 16 by negative 1. So we are going to get a plus 16. And all that's really missing is a coefficient right here in front of a c. Okay, so this is how I always go about it. Or I just say we are going to have ac squared plus bc plus not c but d in this case then. So um, plus I'm not going to use a, I'm going to use, I don't know, gamma, okay? Euler mascheroni constant times c being equal to zero. This right here is the same approach basically as polynomial division. We are going to find out the coefficients. Now, we can just multiply stuff out and actually find out our gamma by comparing coefficients. Meaning we're going to have c to the third power. Um, yeah, c to the third power plus gamma c squared plus 16c and then minus c squared minus gamma c minus 16 being equal to zero. So you see the cool thing is like I said that's why I choose this and that coefficient just like that because we are going to preserve our c to the third power and this negative 16 just what we have here. Meaning we can factor out stuff that's equivalent to saying that um, we have c to the third power plus collecting all the c squared terms c squared times gamma minus one plus all the c terms, so 16 minus gamma minus 16 is equal to zero. Okay, coolio. Now we have a system of equations because we know that we don't have a c squared right here, meaning the coefficient of c squared is nothing but zero. So that's bound to be zero. Meaning gamma is actually equal to one if we go by this, okay? We can just solve for gamma. Does this hold? If we plug 1 into here, we are going to get 16 minus 1 is 15. Exactly. So this actually works like a charm. Meaning our polynomial that we have to work with now to find out our last root is nothing but yeah c squared plus c plus 16. That actually simplified quite nicely. And now we can just make use of the quadratic formula basically and then we're done. So um, yeah, finding out, still, uh, finding out those other roots is actually quite easy. Meaning if this is our p and this is our q, if you go by the p pq formula here in Germany, you are actually going to get, okay, um, c, 2 and 3, the other two roots is negative 1 half plus minus square root of 1 quarter and then plus 16. We have to expand this fraction right here. Meaning 16 times 4 is nothing but 64, right? Yeah, 64. Um, oh yeah, uh, I'm going to have a negative sign right here. Oh, that, that was weird. That was weird. Um, yeah, uh, I was just thinking it looked wrong because I just tracked the positive sign right there. So negative, so 16 is nothing but negative 64 over 4, leaving us with, if we bring those together, negative 63 negative 63 over 4 okay square root of 1 over 4 1 quarter is nothing but 1 half so we can bring this together leaving us with negative 1 
plus minus square root of okay negative 63 over 2 is there anything we can simplify um, I'm always looking for prime factors, for example, of our um, numbers that we have in the third so that we can bring stuff to the outside maybe. Also, square root of negative one is i. One of the parts in the third is positive. So we can bring the i to the front. So this is negative one plus minus i times square root of 63. 63 is nine times seven, right? Square root of nine is three. So. Um, we are going to get 3 times the square root of 7 over 2. But this is just uh, something I prefer. I prefer decomposing this into prime factors or perfect squares kind of. And yeah, then we are done. So I think this should do the trick. Those are the other two roots that we can possibly get on our polynomial right here. So the thing about shit like this is that you always have to guess. So. <laughs> you have to guess this real solution. I do not immediately see how you can actually find out the root of this thing using computation because I don't have the cubic formula in my head. Maybe you can solve some Diophantine equation, I don't know, Diophantine, Diophantine, whatever. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the smart people if you like, if you want to support channel with more wider teachers I created or support channel on Patreon. And up until the next video, have a... Um, Shitty algebra math <laughs> day. See ya.